We are seeing controversial new images coming out of Gaza that have gone viral on social media. They show Israeli soldiers detaining dozens of Palestinian men stripped down to their underwear. The men are seen wearing blindfolds and kneeling on the ground, some packed into the back of a military truck. An IDF spokesperson telling CNN that the men are members or suspected members of Hamas and they were undressed to make sure they were not carrying explosives. I'm joined now by Elon Levy. He is a spokesperson for the Israeli government. Elon, thank you for being with us. Uh, what more can you tell us about this? Are these Hamas Hello, militants Brandon. who surrendered? Are they suspected Hamas militants arrested? Uh, why? Because of a particular reason or just because they are men of fighting age? Well, during Israel's close quarter combat against Hamas fighters in Gaza, we've been detaining many Hamas members. Some have surrendered, others we've managed to get our hands on. And the people we're seeing in these images are all suspected terrorists. Let's remember, these are military-aged men who were found in areas that civilians were supposed to have evacuated over a month ago, and where we've seen close quarter, dense urban fighting between Israeli soldiers and Hamas fighters. And I want to tell you a bit about how that fighting is progressing, because Hamas fighters have not only been dressing up as civilians in violation of international humanitarian law, they've also been operating from inside civilian infrastructure. Just today, for example, uh, terrorists in a school tried to draw our soldiers into an ambush. And when our soldiers killed those terrorists in the school, they found a tunnel shaft inside one of the classrooms. Uh, just today at the Al-Azhar University, we found a tunnel shaft inside one of the university courtyards, right there in the yard. And that tunnel led a, a mile away, a kilometer away to a mosque. So we're dealing with an area where Hamas has laid uh, ambushes for our soldiers. They're trying to draw them into those ambushes. And we have to be very, very careful to try to get those terrorists and get our hands on them, because otherwise there is a very high risk to our forces as they continue to launch attacks against our people. And Elon, thank you for that update. Um, I, I do want to ask you also, though, in, in a statement, Al Arabi Al Jadid said that one of its correspondents and several members of his family were among those who were detained as part of the incident that is portrayed in these images. Can you respond to that? Um, can you tell us anything about this? Hamas fighters dress up as civilians in violation of international humanitarian law, and they operate from inside civilian infrastructure, from inside homes and schools and hospitals. We wish that all Hamas fighters were wearing uniforms that clearly said Hamas on their helmets, because that would make it easier to identify them. But when Hamas dresses up as civilians and fights within civilian areas, they make it very difficult to find them. And as a result, when we find military age men in areas that we have been urging an evacuation of for over a month, because these are Hamas strongholds where we've seen intense urban fighting. We need to apprehend those people, work out who the terrorists are. And if there are people there who are not in fact terrorists, they will of course be released. But Hamas does not walk around, as I said, uh, with signs on their chest saying Hamas. And so when we find people who could be Hamas in Hamas strongholds where there is intense urban fighting going on, we have to get our hands on them. Elon, tonight, the UN Security Council is scheduled to take this rare Article 99 vote. It's calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. How are you reacting to this? That it is atrocious and appalling that the UN Secretary General is choosing to use his diplomatic power in order to keep the Hamas terror regime in power and to ensure its survival. Because let's be clear, that is the meaning of a permanent ceasefire. If you are calling for this war to end with anything other than the destruction of the army of terror that perpetrated the October 7th massacre. You are intervening to ensure the survival of the Hamas terror regime that is telling us that it wants to perpetrate more October 7th massacres over and over again. We think that the real threat to international peace and security was Hamas's October 7th massacre. Anyone calling for a well, ceasefire that would leave those criminals in power is also posing a threat to international peace and security. Elon, and some, Elon, some worry that more than 17,000 people killed, according to the Hamas-led health ministry, but, you know, experts believe that those numbers do grossly reflect uh, what is being seen, that that is also a risk to Israel and also to global security as well. Do you accept that while some people, yes, may clearly have an issue with Israel, whatever you do, however you do it, but that some people who actually very much support Israel just have an issue 
with how you are prosecuting your war. Every civilian death is a tragedy, and, and it's a sad fact that everyone who has been killed since October 7th would still be alive if Hamas had not launched this war, and if it were not fighting this war from inside densely populated urban areas. And as we take the fight to the monsters who perpetrated the October 7th massacre, we are taking steps unprecedented in the history of warfare, not taken by the United States or the United Kingdom in Afghanistan or Iraq or ISIS. We're innovating new ways to try to keep civilians safe. And we believe that when the true civilian to combatant ratio becomes clear, when the fog of war clears, it's going to show very clearly the extent to which the IDF has gone in order to protect civilians' lives when you compare it to other counter-terrorism wars fought by Western armies in urban areas. That is the standard against which this must be measured. But you're right, we too want this war to end. We want this war to be over. But we need this war to be over in a way that removes Hamas from power, because as long as it still has firepower, as long as it threatens to perpetrate more October 7th massacres, we just don't have the luxury of praying this conflict will go away, of ending this job in the middle, because the consequences of inaction will be that we will find ourselves in the same cycle of violence with the army of terror that is telling us it wants to perpetrate more October 7th massacres. Hey, so we're going some to of your allies, like those in the US, to justice some, and to some of your civilians. allies, like those in the US, we've heard uh, Antony Blinken again with his warnings, uh, our defense secretary as well. They believe you do not have the luxury of killing that many civilians as you go after Hamas in order to achieve long-term security. What do you say to that? That we do not have the luxury not to fight this war. And while we fight this war to bring the October 7th monsters to justice, we are taking unprecedented measures to keep civilians safe. It's why we surrendered the element of surprise by giving so much time for an evacuation of northern Gaza before we began the ground offensive. It's why our troops have been on the ground securing safe passage for Palestinians to leave, while our men are putting their lives at risk, coming under fire from Hamas with RPGs. I don't think during the war with ISIS, we saw British or American troops on the ground protecting civilians leaving hospitals while ISIS was firing RPGs at them. We're taking unprecedented measures to keep civilians safe, and it is heartbreaking that Hamas continues to shoot from inside civilian areas. The Hamas's human shield strategy has gotten so bad that they've started shooting rockets at us from inside the humanitarian zone. Israel designated a humanitarian zone where Hamas doesn't have operations because we want civilians to find safety there. And Hamas has decided to shoot rockets at our cities from inside what is supposed to be a safe zone. So we're going to continue to go above and beyond to keep civilians safe, despite Hamas's best attempts to sacrifice them, in their words, it's sick, it's disgusting, in their words, to sacrifice them and to use them as human shields. And we know that the United States sees eye to eye with us about the objectives of this war, about the need to continue fighting in order to topple Elon. Hamas, because as senior administration officials have said over and over again, Otherwise, we're just going to find ourselves in another conflict with Hamas, free and emboldened to attack our people again. There are certainly some differences, uh, very clearly, between U.S. officials. You are right. They, you do have their support. Uh, they certainly have many concerns, as we've been covering that. And, Elon, unfortunately, we have to leave our conversation there. Elon Levy, thank you so much for your time. We'll be right back.